Today, we're going to be doing this without any JavaScript whatsoever. Hey everybody, what's up? Gary Simon here. So today we're going to be checking out, once again, staggered animations in your web layouts, except this time there's going to be no JavaScript. Um, in the past, I've shown this sort of thing with different, you know, specific niche libraries, also with GSAP. Um, but this time, no JavaScript whatsoever. And this tutorial here that you're watching is heavily inspired by an article where I discovered this. And that is by uh, this, this link right here. And I'll link this in the uh, YouTube description. And it's written by Paul Hebert. I think that's how you pronounce the name. Probably not. Sorry if not. And basically what we have here uh, is a tutorial on how to do this. And I, I followed it pretty closely, but I did change some things up. Uh, he has a button here, and this is basically the effect. Uh, but he does have some JavaScript in here. Mine has no JavaScript because I'm using a, a checkbox for uh, the way we toggle this in and out. But you could do so many other features with this or uh, different types of animations, like perhaps on a landing page, have the, the text kind of just fall in or whatever. So it doesn't have to be in the context of a menu. Either way, I thought it'd be cool to show you guys this because usually I've always shown you how to do it with JavaScript. This time it's without. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started. Before we begin, Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your website, your portfolio, your online store and more on whatever technology stack you use. Getting up and running is fast and easy with one-click app installs like WordPress and Drupal. With back-end access to your server, customization and scaling options are all but limitless. If you just need something small like an online portfolio to showcase your work, Linode has you covered. If you need to manage tons of clients' websites and reliably serve them to millions of visitors, Linode can do that too. So sign up using the link below in the description to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. All right, so we're just gonna get started with the HTML first. So we're gonna use the M abbreviations here in Visual Studio Code. Um, and of course, I have a video on that. If you don't know what that is, it just makes your life a little bit easier in terms of not having to type out all the HTML by hand. We're gonna have a class here of, um, just we're gonna call it left for a left column. And then also we'll have, where are we at? There we go. Um, a right column as well. And inside of here, we're just gonna have a paragraph, standard features, and then a unordered list with a class of standard. All right, and then just an li element, basic account, and we'll replicate that a few times, um, and we'll just leave it at that for now. And then we'll create the same unordered list basically over here, except give it a um, class of featured. And then inside of here, we're gonna use a, um, a checkbox input um, just to toggle this on and off, just to show you, you know, how you can do that. So let me put in input here. Type is going to be checkbox. Name is going to be features. ID, we'll make it features as well. And what else? Value, I don't know. We'll just say premium, even though we don't need that. Um, outside of that, we'll have our label for equals features. And then we'll just put premium features here. All right, that looks pretty good right there. And then that's it uh, for the HTML, except we are going to be adding some um, inline styles here in order to make this work correctly. But for now, let's uh, worry about something else. Just go to our main.sass. So I'm using the um, live SAS compiler. If you go to your um, plugins, it's live SAS compilation and then also live uh, server. So have those installed and enabled if you wish to follow along. All right. So um, we're just going to get some initial rule sets out of the way here. So the body element, uh, let's save that. And we can take a look at the result here. Um, why is that not updating? There we go. All right. So this is what we have so far with our little checkbox here. Of course, nothing's animating because we didn't add the CSS yet. So um, as you can see, we have display grid, place content center. And we only have one element here. Uh, that contains everything essentially, which is the container element. So that, this will center it vertically and horizontally. Um, we'll take our container and we'll do uh, display flex. And that means the two elements inside of it will float left and right of each other. And then we'll say left, we're gonna say margin right. We're gonna say three EM, so that's gonna create some white space in between those two columns, just to push them away. 
Um, what else? We'll also take our paragraphs. We're gonna do margin zero because the paragraph is kind of serving like a label and that way they're both on the same height here or line height or whatever. So now I uh, will reference our right column and we'll just say overflow hidden. And I'm doing that because I uh, will be using the way we're gonna animate it. We're gonna animate the transition X position and like, kind of like push it off the side. And uh, if you have the viewport in like this, this would create scroll bars. Um, so we're just getting rid of that. All right, uh, so next we're gonna say, uh, we're just gonna do something simple, P in label, which is both of our, our labels essentially. We're gonna say font size 1.5 M units. And also we will do uh, font weight bold. So again, this is going back to UI design. This is some visual hierarchy stuff. All right, this checkbox looks pretty ugly. So I'm going to, just for the purpose of this tutorial, get rid of it. Um, and I will do that in a second, not yet though. All right, next up, we're gonna say our UL. So we're gonna style both of the unordered lists that we have. Um, we're just gonna say list style type is gonna be none to get rid of those bullet points. Margin will be 1.5M on the top and bottom and zero right and left. Padding will be zero, we're just gonna reset that to zero. And then our LI elements will be margin bottom, 1, uh, 0.5M units to push them away. Font size, not font weight, rather is gonna be 1.2M units. And then color will be AO, AO, AO. <laughs> All right, which is just kind of like a gray color. And you'll see, this is what we have so far. All right, we're making our way there. Um, then we're going to reference specifically the UL featured element. So LI, um, I don't think, I, yeah, I didn't actually have any um, rule sets for the featured element, so I didn't technically have to do that, but whatever. Um, we're going to hide it initially with opacity zero. All right, and again, this is all coming from that article that I, I mentioned, uh, just to, to hide them initially. Of course, they're all there, um, but they're just hidden, so you can't see them. So what we wanna do is add in some transform properties based on however you want to personally have your elements animate. So for me, translate, we're gonna do uh, transform, gonna be translate 100%, uh, and then uh, we'll just say 0% right here for this value. So technically we could just do probably translate X and get rid of that. All right, so now uh, that will have pushed it off. You can see the cursor doesn't change, so it's it's over here somewhere. Um, so now we can do transform, no, not transition, transform. This is gonna be transition. We're gonna say duration will be 0.5 seconds. And transition, if I could type, or spell rather, um, timing function is going to be, I, I, I decided to use a, a cubic Bezier function for this and I used a, um, a, a CSS custom easing tool to get to this. You could put ease in, ease in out, ease out, whatever. Transition property, we're gonna say opacity and transform. Those are the two CSS uh, elements that we want to change. And then transition, delay. All right, now this is where is it's, um, actually we're not gonna put that yet. We are going to wait. So I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. So now again, nothing's gonna happen here. You know, this doesn't work yet. We're just setting it up to get you know, ready to be animated in that, in that sort of sequence animation. So now we're gonna go to label. Um, I wanted to change it to cursor pointer just to make it obvious that you can actually click it. Color is gonna be gray um, and then, and hover, I'll, I'll go ahead and change that to color white. So now you come back here, all right. Yay, cool stuff. We're getting to the meat soon. So we're gonna say, let's see, input type is checkbox. So that's the whole, the, the, the way that we're gonna activate these CSS animations. We'll do position absolute, um, and then we'll just do left like, ni like negative 5,000 pixels. That gets rid of the checkbox, but still this will work because the label uh, the four attribute is being tied to the ID of the checkbox. So this will still check it on and off. Um, and then what we wanna do is uh, and checked plus label. So that will select the next element right after the checkbox, which happens to be the label um, HTML element. And we'll do color white. 
So that way, when we check it, it will stay white. And when we uncheck it, it will uh, gray out. I wouldn't recommend this sort of pattern if you actually have a checkbox. Um, it's best to either, if you're gonna have a checkbox, either leave the default styled checkbox or you can do custom checkbox styling, which I covered last week anyhow, if you want to. But I'm just kind of rushing through this right now, so I'm not too concerned about it. So now we're gonna do and checked. All right, and we're going to use, uh, I believe it's called, what is it called? The, shoot, I forget what type of selector the tilde sign here is, but basically it will look for any other sibling element um, and it doesn't have to be directly after. So this is gonna be ULLI. And so what we'll say here, say this is where we want to apply the actual properties that the LI elements, the list item elements will trans, uh, will, will animate or transition to. So we had opacity zero, we're gonna make it go to opacity one. And then also transform translate X is gonna be zero, which is its default position. Um, and then transition delay, this is again, this part's coming from that tutorial. Um, it's going to be, let's see here, calc, calc function right there. And then it's, uh, the, the the actual distance or, or time rather. So this, the the larger this number is, um, the more of uh, the sequence animation, like the longer it will take essentially. So uh, I'm gonna put 0 0.055 seconds here times var and then index. So this is a CSS custom property called index and we haven't yet defined that. So let's go define that right now. And we're gonna define it um, right here on the LI elements of the parts that we want to animate in. So that basically looks like of uh, doing uh, inline CSS. So we'll do style and we'll do index zero and then paste this, make sure you paste it correctly. And then this will be one, two, three and four. Um, as the tutorial mentions, this isn't quite ideal to have to have this added in here. Whoa, what happened there? Uh, but usually if you're using something like view or whatever, this this type of uh, list element could be iterated over um, anyhow. So it'd be a little bit more uh, dynamic in a sense rather than just being static here. So uh, we'll save that and let's just see if this works. I don't know if it works quite yet. Oh, there it goes. So very cool. Now, one thing, you can reverse the animation as well. And again, this is coming from that article. And the way you do that is we specify a length style. Sorry, one second, there we go. Uh, and we do it on the, the parent container. So style, we're gonna make a custom property called length. And this is basically how many list items there are. So zero, one, two, three, four is five. So, um, We'll save that. So then we come back up here and we add the tra transition delay property. And this time it's slightly different than what it was before. I'm just gonna paste in the value. There's some uh, mathematics that are happening here that I'm not even gonna try to describe probably because I haven't tried to even figure it out myself. It doesn't seem too complex though. Um, but basically having this on the original list item elements um, will make sure that this transition delay property is what's set when this one right here is not set or when it, the, the checkbox is unchecked. So now let's go ahead and try that. It comes in normally and then it leaves in you know basically the opposite fashion. Very, 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 as always, cool stuff. All right. So hopefully you found that useful and you've learned something new. All right. So if I screwed something up, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed it, make sure to comment and also leave a like with that bell notification icon and I'll see you guys real soon. Goodbye.